Tonight's headline, Tropical Storm Ma'on, near landfall in southern China. And now the latest, around the wide world of tropics. The weather bulletin for August 25th. So it's still the Eastern Hemisphere that's got the activity right now, with Typhoon Tokage moving well offshore Japan and weakening now substantially, and Matt On, which is also struggling a little bit as it uh, approaches the coast of southern China, the Lisu Peninsula and Hainan. We're still in code yellow on this day of the year, it's day 86 in the Atlantic Ocean, and we're not giving up on three areas of interest that are still all there at 10% chances each. Uh, the first one, the most westerly, is just about to move through the uh, Lesser Antilles, the tropical wave. It could develop later on down the line. The other two uh, we'll discuss later. The Eastern Pacific, no areas of interest now. It's all quiet here. Uh, so we're left with the nine storms that we've received so far on our tally. Still the busiest basin in the northern hemisphere so far and in the western pacific we still have typhoon Tokage moving well offshore there Ma'an which is near the coast of China as mentioned and another area of interest that we're now giving a 20% chance of following a pretty similar track to this recent typhoon um, so keep your eyes out for that the remnants of 4B are still traceable now into Pakistan um, so that is another interesting story there and still delivering potentially dangerous rainfall. So let's take a look at satellite imagery today. This is what the North Atlantic looks like right now and you can see a general uh, picture, fairly quiet picture there, uh, a rather suppressed intertropical convergence zone. You might see far to the east there, maybe that next system moving through. The Caribbean system uh, potential uh, is really not showing very much right now, as you just saw there. The Eastern Pacific, there is still that disturbance that's out there right now, although it's not looking great. I guess rotation is a little bit poor. Um, very dry air out at sea. And apart from that, really no other features to discuss in the Eastern Pacific. Um, just to mention a few thunderstorms across Central America. Here's a close-up on Mount On right now, and you'll be forgiven for wondering where the center is, because it's very difficult to see. Uh, wind shear is really doing a number on this storm right now, and the center is right on that northern periphery of the um, convection almost exposed so it's very close to the coast of China now and it's expected to make landfall just in a few hours or less here is Tokage I'm sure you saw it yesterday looking like a fantastic uh, major typhoon and there it is now we're still giving it typhoon status but it's looking very sorry for itself also a victim probably of wind shear but sea surface temperatures are also dropping here's a recent loop of both of these systems, Tokage uh, clearing off towards the north and of course Ma'an approaching China. It's been a very broad system, a typical South China Sea system to be honest. These storms tend to grow quite a lot after a Luzon landfall, um, uh, as storms tend to do after any landfall to be honest. Here is the uh, Indian Ocean where you can see the remnants of 4B and also a disturbance down in the southern hemisphere that could develop later on is actually a 20% out on that at the moment and in the Australian region nothing really to discuss the Indonesian region a lot of uh, thunderstorms out there but nothing in terms of tropical activity and just general frontal systems moving through on both sides of the Australian continent So let's take a look at the latest sea surface temperatures and you'll see that they haven't moved very much recently. 30 degrees still lingering off the western coast of Mexico so any new storms that form there will have a decent time. The Gulf of Mexico also very warm 30 degrees plus even warmer off the coast of Florida pushing 31 or 32 even on the west coast and out over the western Atlantic also looking pretty decent out to a very far distance which leads me to think that this season is certainly um, still got quite a bit left to prove itself. The Indian Ocean, fairly warm still, it doesn't really affect 4B, it's so far inland. 
uh, format on there those temperatures looking pretty good as well pushing 32 degrees actually uh, as it nears the coast and in the Gulf of Tonkin further out to sea you can see those that temperatures are looking pretty decent where Tokage is right now temperatures just about to drop off a cliff still holding on to 26 degrees but it is very much on borrowed time now well that 20% might develop also high sea surface temperatures you can see here that in the higher latitudes is where we have the highest anomalies in the positives uh, in the tropical zones less uh, crazy but it is actually increasing generally especially in the Gulf of Mexico and the northern South China Sea only a few places below average most uh, notably the La Nina in the central Pacific uh, the more I look at this map, the more we see that oceanic heat content continues to extend in the Caribbean. It's crazy how much is in there right now. Western Pacific also a good deal, but you'd expect that. The Eastern Pacific looking just a little bit better, but still not great. But there's still plenty of opportunities out there as well for tropical development. We just need the storms to take advantage. So computer models, this is the short range, watch the Caribbean, there's a little system over there you can just about trace and then watch the uh, coast of Africa and see what comes out there uh, towards the end of this loop. Uh, you should see, yep, there's a new tropical cyclone developing, that's the third system, the one we've marked furthest east as a future cyclone, uh, and that's probably got the best chance out of all three of them. The other two look like they're going to struggle, <coughs> uh, and this system ends up looking like it's going to form on day five. Western Pacific, you can see Tokage moving well off northwards, uh, Maton moving inland, so those two are foregone conclusions. And then that next system forming now from the GFS model, which has got backing, I think it was the CMC that's got backing for it as well, which is why we're giving a 20%. Uh, and GFS wants it to be another typhoon, so um, considering how they've lowballed this, uh, Tokage at least, uh, we may get pretty much exactly the same scenario again next week we'll wait and see looking at uh, some precipitation forecasts if I could say it properly um, you can take a look at what we're expecting for Matt on still substantial rainfall amounts on various parts of uh, the Lizu Peninsula and in northern Vietnam sneaking into the southern part of China there as well uh, we're looking at maximum rainfall totals probably of around 12 inches which is two uh, what is it 300 millimeters I think uh, and we're looking at around nine inches now for parts of northern Vietnam uh, which is pushing 250 millimeters so still substantial amounts of rain possible in these areas which could lead to localized and widespread flooding uh, depending on your geography uh, so some substantial flooding possible longer range day 5 through 10 let's track this Atlantic system then and look it's straight out the gates and becomes a hurricane through the Cape Verde Islands which is quite strange uh, I'm not sure about that uh, but later on in its track it cements hurricane status a second time there and then two systems either side you see that at the end there um, and that second system might actually come from at least part of the energy from that second system that we've already got marked and there it is developing once again near the Caribbean and then that third system forming east of Cape Verde. That's long range out to 10 days there so I'd throw some doubt into all of that. Very uncertain when you've got one storm. If it's projecting three then it's even more uncertain. Eastern Pacific, one or two little signs of life there. You can see there a system developing possibly a brief tropical cyclone and then moving into the central Pacific. It's not forming in the central pacific on that run so that's not a hone but uh you never know what might happen with that forecast and that's all we've got for the next 10 days so that's the serious stuff out of the way you can take a look at the force 13 merch store by scanning that code it will take you straight there you can request individual and full season animations along with our full complement of merch products as well as the still waiting for hone t-shirt which I think will be etched into our eyes for quite a while yet. 
And so will this, the Silly Range shows quite a scenario for the Atlantic at the 18Z GFS, four simultaneous tropical cyclones eventually, and that first hurricane balloons and becomes enormous in the western Atlantic, where does it think it's going? And a massive tropical storm moving through the Florida Panhandle region towards the end of that run as well. Two other tropical storms also active there in that period, one of them becomes a hurricane, so this really would be the reboot of the Atlantic hurricane season if it were to pass, but I shed doubt on that right now. Western Pacific also showing more signs of life after this period of activity. Two systems once again, uh, one off Taiwan moving through into China and then this absolutely ginormous typhoon here. Um, that is insanely large. That's rivaling typhoon tip I might hasten to say, hesitate to say. Uh, so that's why I would throw lots of doubt over that one. Um, that is long range Western Pacific up to its crazy tricks. That ain't happening. What did happen though was another tremendous event five years ago on this day. Hurricane Harvey was on approach to its Category 4 landfall in Texas. I'm sure we all remember that one. Force 13 covered it extensively and made several reports on the storm. Part of the blockbuster 2017 Atlantic hurricane season. Also active was the remnants of Kenneth in the eastern Pacific and tropical storm Pakar which was moving through the Philippine Islands. Harvey of course being one of the wettest tropical cyclones on record and one of the costliest for the United States and for the world. So this year we've not had anything of that nature yet thankfully and hopefully that will remain the case. The next name in the Atlantic is Danielle. In the Eastern Pacific it will be Javier and in the Central Pacific we are still waiting for Hone. If that happens and nothing else I think we'll be very happy. In the Western Pacific the next name now is Hinamnor followed by Muifa and in the North Indian Ocean we'll be waiting for Citrang which I really did think 4B would attain that name at some point but it never did. So we're still waiting for that. Southern Hemisphere, the Australian region, our next name is Darien. The Southwest Indian Ocean will start with Ashley. And in the South Pacific, our next name there is Harley. That's all for tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night. <laughs>